so this lesson today is going to be kind of like taking everything that we have learned in chapter five, like mean, median, mode, range, um, and putting it in probability and kind of putting it all together into one kind of lesson. All of these are going to be real world problems involving, here's what it says, probability, which we should know, and then it says measures of central tendency. Well, that's a weird word, we haven't talked about it, but basically what that means is, if I think of central, it's things in the middle. Central tendency is just a fancy way of saying the mean, median, and mode. And the reason they call it central tendency is because typically the mean, when we find the average, it's a number in the middle, like a central number. The median is the middle or the central number. And the mode is usually a number that's towards the middle of the data set. Not always, but, but normally, okay? So we're gonna be involving all word problems. First of all, um, what you could do is you can listen and maybe pause the video whenever you want, try and solve them on your own, and then I will check. The mean weight, so first, automatically, if I'm doing anything with mean, as soon as I see the words mean, I think I have, I'm working with the average, I need to know my numbers of groups, and I need to know my total. So if I'm looking at this, I'm remembering this, the TGA, which means total groups and the average. And the reason we do this is because when we find the average, we have to know the total amount. We add everything up to know our exact total, how many groups we have, and then we divide them to figure out our average. If we are, have our total in groups, we can figure out the average. If we have the groups in the average, we can figure out the total. This is just a good way to organize your information and show that you understand and keep things together to help solve the problems. So the mean weight of two tables, if I have two tables, right here I'm going to draw bars too, I have two tables. That means I have two groups. The mean weight of those two tables is 16 pounds. That means that this table is 16 and this table is 16. Obviously they're not actually 16, it just means if I put the two together, divide it, they would be 16 pounds. The weight of one of the tables, so I'm going to stop, okay? First of all, before I even move on to this next sentence, I can figure out my overall total. If I have two tables with an average of 16, if I multiply my step one, 16 times two, I get 32, so my total is 32, okay? Right now, I'm going to look at the rest of the table, or the rest of the problem. The weight of one of the tables, so here's table one, is 12 pounds okay the weight what is the weight of the other table well once 12 the only thing I know is I have two groups so I have to have two tables I need the total of both tables is for sure 32 based on my TGA and if one of them is 12 pounds I can now figure out the other table and the way I can do this is I'm doing my second problem is I can do 32 minus the first table which is 12 and I get 20 so then therefore I know that the weight of the other table, other table is 12, and I'm going to write pounds because I need to um, write what it is because it could be 12 anything, so I need to specify 12 pounds, okay? So there's problem one. This one says, Mr. Sacco bought chicken, fish, and shrimp at a market. Already, I have chicken, fish, and shrimp. I have three groups, okay? So the mean weight of the three items was seven pounds. Okay, so right now, the mean weight of these three is seven. I know they're not all seven pounds, but the mean of them is seven. So if I have a TGA, I have three groups, and the average is seven. And now I can figure out my total, because I have seven groups of three, so that's 21. So my total is 21, okay? Now, the second part of the problem says the weight of the chicken. So now they're actually telling us the weight. So here's me showing the mean. Now I'm going to draw a new bar that actually displays the information. I still have chicken, fish, and shrimp. But the weight of the chicken was 8 pounds, okay? And the weight of the fish was 4 pounds. Oops, that's half of that. So I'm going to make my bar be half. This is 4. And it says what was the weight of the shrimp? Well, I don't know that. So I'm just going to make something give it a question mark. But I do know my total has stayed the same because in average the total never changes. I still have 21, it's just been redistributed to different bars. So I'm looking at this and I see 21 is my whole and I have two parts but I'm missing a part. If I'm missing a part of something, I know that the part has to be smaller than the whole. So 
what I'm going to do to figure this out is get rid of the chicken, get rid of the fish, and whatever's left over is how much the shrimp is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do 21 minus 8 minus 4. Well, let's see, I'm going to add the chicken and fish. 8 plus 4 is 12. So I'm going to subtract 12. 11, 10, oops, 9. And I have 9 left over. So that means that the shrimp must equal 9. So I'll write in a sentence, the shrimp weighs, and now what's the question? What was the weight of the shrimp that he bought? The shrimp weighs 9 pounds. And I can even check this because 8 plus 4 plus 9 has to be 21, okay? So you could check to see if it's correct. Red bar models are a good way, and the TGA is a good strategy. All right, let's solve another one. I have, I need to make my pen. Um, I have another one. It says, Kitty bought 20 books at a book fair. Okay, so she has 20 books. I'm going to do a TGA right now. I only know my group. She has 20 books, okay? The mean cost of 15 of the books, uh-oh. Already I'm looking, and I have, this TGA is like the total of everything. I need a new TGA for these 15 books because they're only telling me little bits of pieces of information at a time. So the mean cost of 15 of the books, mean means average, was $12, okay? And then the total cost of the other five books, oh my gosh, now I have the other five. And you know what is helpful? If I have five books plus 15 books, this will get me my 20 books. The total cost, so here's my total, of the five books was $40. So I know my $40 isn't going on my average here. It's going in my total. Okay? And it says find the mean cost, I mean the average, of the 20 books. Okay, so there's my actual question. Now, Right now I have two pieces of missing information that I need to solve first. And because I have this TGA, I'm able to solve them. Automatically, for this one, if I have 15 books and they're $12 each, I know I have to multiply the average because I'm picturing 15 books, $12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 15 times. So for this one, I'm going to do 15 times 12. 5 times 2 is 10. 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 is 3. Put down my zero for my tenth place. One times five is five, and one times one is one. Whoops. I have one. What? Fifteen times twelve? Okay. So that means my total here is 180. Now I'm over here. I'm trying to find my average. Well, if I have a total of $40 and there's five books, I have to divide... 40 divided by 5, which I know is 8, so the average is $8, okay? Now I have some missing information. Now I can probably figure out my average of the overall 20 books. I know that if I put these two together, my 180 plus my $40, I can get the overall total of all the amount of money the books were. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do 180 plus 40, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and I get 220, so my overall total is $220, okay? That's a lot. So I want to figure out the average amount each book cost, so I need to take my 220, and I'm dividing that by 20, and if I divide that, I will get 11. So what I know is that the average of those is $11, and my actual question, let me reread the question, is, what was the actual question? Find the mean cost of 20 books. So my overall mean is it's $11. So I would write the overall cost was $11, okay? And I have all of my work. Um, I hope that you see the reason I did three different TGAs and why that was helpful. We're gonna try another one. This one maybe you should pause and see if you can figure out this one on your own and then press play when you're ready. All right, the mean weight of a chicken and a duck. Chicken, duck, already on my TGA. 
I have two groups because I have a chicken and a duck, is five pounds. So the mean weight is five pounds. Meaning when I'm picturing this, I have a chicken, I have a duck, and they're both five pounds, okay? Now that I know that though, I can figure out the total because five times my two groups is 10. So my total is 10, okay? It says find the weight of the duck. So, oh, the duck is two pounds heavier than the chicken. So what I need is to draw a new bar, chicken, duck, and the duck is two pounds heavier. So I'm gonna make this. I know that this is two, and I know that this is the same, and the total is still 10, okay? Well, if the duck overall is 10 pounds, I wanna figure out what goes inside, what's the weight of the actual duck, like the whole duck, how much does it weigh? Well, I'm looking at this and I see I have a hole, and I see I'm missing a part. But what's interesting about the parts that I'm missing is I have dots in them to show that this part and this part are the same. So when I have equal parts, I know eventually I'm going to divide. However, this little two right here is making it difficult to split because I need to get rid of this and my, my total minus those two, and I now have eight holes left over. So I know that this and this are going to be eight. So if I take eight and I split it in half, I know that four goes inside each of these, okay? So overall, my duck is four plus this little extra two. Overall, the duck weighs six pounds. Okay, I'm gonna write it in a sentence and I'm gonna circle it. All right, let's do another one. Um, this is solving problems to find the mean, median, mode, and range, okay? So, using this information, we're going to have to find all of this stuff. Jake and five friends went on a trip and collected 432 rocks altogether. Two of his friends did not count the individual number of rocks they collected. The data was recorded is shown below. Again, I'm going to do a TGA because this is talking about mean and total and groups. So, that Jake and five friends. Well, if I have five friends plus me, that means there's six total people. And we collected 432 rocks. I can now find the average first before I move on. If I have 432 divided by six, six goes into four, it can happen. Six goes into 43, well, six times seven is 42. So that is, oops, remainder one, and six goes into 12 twice, so that's two. So my average is 72. Everybody had about 72 rocks, okay? So they, 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 here's their data, they have the numbers 85, 78, 93, 52, and then two missing ones because two of his friends didn't actually count. First, we have to find the mean. We did that. The mean is 72. We already calculated that. Number two says well, the greatest number of rocks collected was 93, and the range is 97, 47. What is the least number of rocks? Okay, time out. I know that when I find the range, I do the biggest minus the smallest, and then I get the range, okay? So if I'm gonna do this, they're giving me the biggest number is 93, minus the smallest number, which we don't know, but I know that the range is 47. Well, if I wanna figure out this missing number, I can take my biggest minus the range and plug in that extra missing piece. So I'm gonna do 93 minus 47. Oops, oh. And then 8, where are we? 4, 46. And I know that this missing number is 46. So the smallest one is 46. Ooh, you know what I'm noticing? We have the 93 right here, but I don't see that 46. So one of these missing ones has to be 46. Okay? Now, whoops. Now what I'm going to look for, here's another question, is find the mode. Which number occurs most often? and then I have to find the median. Okay, well time out. First of all, I'm still missing a number. So in my brain I'm thinking, how can I actually find this missing card? Well, if I'm only missing one, and I know that all together, the total of all of these is 432, I know that if I take my total, subtract this, 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 whatever's left over is going to be this number. So what I'm going to do is take 432, my total, and I'm gonna subtract all of these numbers. So, oops, what was that missing one, 46? I'm gonna use my calculator right now. 
just to make life easier, I'm going to add 85 plus 78 plus 93 plus 52 plus 46 equals, and I got, did I do that wrong? 132. I think I got 484? No. 184? I can't be right. 85 plus 78 plus. I think my, my calculator is being weird. Let me go with a different calculator. Grace, technical difficulties. working one. I'm going to add them again. I have 85 plus 78 plus 93 plus 52 plus 46 equals 354. That one was working. Okay. I have 354 of the total 432. I'm going to subtract them and see what I get and that's going to be my missing one. So 432 minus 354 equals 78, then I know my missing one is 78. Now I can find the median and the mode. Now remember, I'm going to list these numbers in order to find the median from least to greatest. 46 is my smallest, 52, 78, 78, 85, and 93. Already I see the mode, and luckily it's because that last one I'm missing. So the mode is 78, because I have two 78s. And then the median is the middle one. One, 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 one. Two 78s in the middle. Well, they're both the same, so my median is also 78. Okay, I'm gonna. that's enough for this video, but I am going to post a part two that has more of these problems on it that you can also practice.